the Cumulus Media Station. Good morning, everyone. We ready? Live from the TFCU Energy Studio. The Rule and Ryan Show with producer Eric, Special K, and Sam. You know, if you ever miss any part of the Rule and Ryan Show, you got to check out the podcast. Also, maybe you heard something. Maybe you're going to hear revenge here in a second and you want to tell a friend about it. Or you can't, they can't hear the listen whole thing. right now. Yeah, at the end of the hour, we're going to post it at krbe.com or, or download our app or wherever you can consume your podcast. At the end of every hour, we'll post the podcast. So you can just always hear it again. We're getting or, quicker. Or you're trying to retell somebody, oh my God, you know, I heard, wait, let's go find the podcast. I want to hear it right now. Mm-hmm. You'll hear it at the end of the hour. So that's where you're going to go to hear what you missed. And now it's time for revenge. Now it's time for Rula and Ryan's revenge. For the truly wronged, sometimes all you have left is revenge. 104.1 KRBE. Yeah, like that guy said. Parental discretion is always advised with revenge. So go to KRBE.com or you can uh, reach out to Eric, uh, producer Eric on Instagram. You can direct message him as well. And uh, people who have been messed with, they just can't take it anymore. They're like, that's Mm-mm. it. I'm getting you back. Here's my payback. But the person that messed with them doesn't know they've been gotten back. That's how the whole <laughs> thing plays out. Belinda's going to explain what's happened in her world as we welcome her now. Good morning, Belinda. Hi, good morning. Hey, Belinda. Hey, Belinda. Who is it you're trying to get revenge on? I just want to get some revenge on, uh, you know, my baby daddy over here because we have a child. He's two years old, so it kind of feels like he should be stepping in just a little more. Well, what's y'all's status? Are you guys living together? Do you not live together? What's the deal? He was just there from time to time, but now he does not stop by. He's unresponsive, and weeks would go by in the past where he wouldn't even reach out to me at all. Sometimes he would just sneak in when I wasn't there, like if my mom was there, but he is just not being responsive. He barely even checks in with his daughter, and this is just out of hand at this point and he's not even speaking to me about this since you weren't married what what kind of agreement did you guys have when it came to uh child support when it came up to child support he would give me money monthly towards like our daughter's expenses like you know diapers and formula but he wasn't like paying for everything and it's not mandated by a court somewhere this is just a personal because yeah domain? do you, you can have still go to court and yeah well, that's true you don't have to be married if you, do you have a legal decree stating that he is the father and, and that has he to give you money has to pay you through san antonio san antonio that's where you write your check for child okay. support that's why i hate san antonio, san antonio. Nope. <laughs> is that true for every single person in texas yeah yeah it oh. goes through san antonio so, uh, do you have anything legally saying he has to pay? He's on the birth certificate, obviously, but we never went to court or anything to work out an agreement because that costs both of us more money, which neither of us have. So, we thought it would be best because of our relationship with each other to come together with an agreement we both could agree on. Has he ever paid you anything? He's only paid a little bit for clothes and formula, but he hasn't helped with housing. He hasn't helped me with daycare. None of that. See, that's the problem because people go into it thinking, let's just try and be civil about this and not spend money on attorneys and court time and all that. And then one of them breaks the trust. And usually it's the dude. But the good thing is you can still take him to court. You set the stage as why you got revenge. Obviously, he's a deadbeat. Um, and he is standing by, but he doesn't know why he's here. He hasn't heard anything of what you're saying. And I guess we're going to find out what the revenge is. Eric, you're smiling. You know yep. something went down. Well, it wouldn't be revenge then. It'd be just, hey, we hear you complain about somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get, his, let's get him on over. the line. That's not okay, much wait, fun. What, what's his name? Franklin. His name's Franklin. Okay, Franklin, Franklin. is standing by. And, uh, Every time I hear that, I think of that, in, that turtle, turtle right? Oh, it's Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. he hates that. Sorry. Let me conference him in, Belinda, and then I'll tell him that you're on the line with us and y'all can talk it out. Hi, welcome to the Rule and Ryan Show on 104.1 KRBE. Franklin, thanks for joining us this morning. Hello. Hey, good, good morning, y'all. Franklin, on Tuesdays, we let people uh, air out their grievances. Somebody that you know from your past is on the line right now, and she's got a few things she'd like to say to you. Hey, Franklin, oh, this is Belinda. Oh, sh- what, you, what do you want, man? Uh-oh. Well, this is not going to go well. In a nutshell, before she comes at you, let me just tell you, Franklin, she let us know that you guys share a child together and you're not really doing your part financially for your daughter. Look, look, it's, times have been a little rough around this way is what I got to say about that. I already told her when I got the money, I'm going to give it to her. She obviously is a little hard of hearing when it comes to that. I, I just cannot believe you're even telling me that because times are tough, you are not doing everything you can to try to live up to your end of the deal regarding our daughter. 
And you're not even communicating with me about anything. Well, then, is he even in your daughter's life at all? He used to be a little bit more in the beginning, but the past few months, I've barely seen his butt coming in out of the door. Like I said, I told her times is tough. I'm working to try to get whatever I can together to help support. But that's not about money. We're talking about presents. We're talking yeah. about presents. Like, you don't need money to spend time with your daughter. It's to hang you out. Just be with her. Do you not want to be a part of your daughter's life? It's not even about that. I honestly don't want to be a part of Belinda's life because she honestly is annoying. It's just a difficult person to be around, honestly. So I, that's why I even go to the house when she's not there. Unfortunately, the um, fun, frisky time y'all shared makes you part of her life forever. At least 18 At least years. Till, yeah. Until your daughter's 18. So you're going to have to tolerate Belinda in order to be part of your child's life. Yeah, that's one of the worst mistakes I've ever made, to be honest with you. I you're mean, saying your child is a mistake. My daughter ain't a mistake, but Belinda's a mistake. So, Belinda, why don't you tell us and Franklin what we still don't know, why you're here. Franklin, have you checked your Facebook lately? Uh, not for real. You know I don't be on social media like that. Well, I'm just, I uh, want to remind you that, uh, you know, you never changed your login information or password. And I still had that information from a few years back when you were having an issue logging into your account. I can't even really get into my Facebook right now. Let me go ahead and check on my computer real quick. I'm guessing this has something to do with the revenge. No, she just wants him to go to Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) The fact that he can't get in. (laughs) What the hell? Hold on. Oh, I see you don't remember that party. Franklin there got a little crazy at a party we were at and got a little drunk, passed out on a couch, and we happened to have an artist at the party who um, was very fond of male genitalia and used his face as a canvas. Wait, what? what? You drew a weenie on his face? Or weenies? Yes. You need to take that down, man. Take that down. Where's it at? Is it his profile pic? Is it just a post? What? <laughs> oh, it's profile. It's post. It's view story. It's everything. What do the comments say? The caption for that photo was number one deadbeat dad of the year. And a few of your coworkers have now seen that and commented, oh, and by the way, one of your coworkers just got promoted to your manager. So good luck with that. And, um, oh, one more thing. I've already contacted a lawyer. Oh, you need to. That's yeah, the smart thing to do. Your daughter. But why would you have done that, Belinda? I'm sure Franklin's so curious. Franklin, what does she need the lawyer for? You know. Because she's annoying and she's a, a toxic parasite in my life. Because you're not paying <laughs> for your child, you jerk. Yeah, she's engaging the lawyer not to protect herself from anything she's done against you on social media. It's for to get money for your child. Franklin, you and I came to an agreement regarding money for our daughter. You broke the agreement. You have not been acting like a man. So I've also contacted the lawyer. Ball is in your court at this point. If you want all this to go away, you know what you have to do. You, you are like truly the worst, but fine. If it gets you to stop acting like a child, if I Venmo you some, some cash right now, would that at least temper you for a little bit? Take off. Because in a record what? of it. Yeah, no. Well, you you should give her money, but if you guys are going to, you know, go the legal route, yeah, everything's got to go through San Antonio. All that is is a gift. Just letting you know when you you're going to talk to San Antonio and say, "Look, I just Venmoed her three hundred dollars." Sorry, but that doesn't count. Yeah. You should do that, but just letting you know that doesn't count towards child support. Yeah, I, I'll send her a little something, something. She's probably about to go spend it on a purse or some shopping spree or something. Oh, no, that is not the case. Y'all have a child together. You know, if you don't want to be in your kid's life, that's one thing, but you need to, you made a baby, you got to pay up, dude. And you can't control where the money goes. You have to give it to her mm-hmm. and hope she does the right thing, and it sounds like she will. You're not doing the right thing. Yeah, I know her. Y'all don't. She ain't going to do the right thing with that money, but whatever. All right, we'll see. Let the lawyers handle it. Okay, Belinda, thanks for reaching out to our show. I hope this gets better, although it sounds like it's going to get worse first. (laughs) Eventually come out the other side with everything right. Yeah, thanks for your help, guys. All right, you take care. It's just... It's it's hard can enough being just, a parent, but being divorced parents or not even together. Can they just provide for their kids? Can everybody just... I don't get it. Find the common ground and provide for your children. And to his point, he's like, well, I know she's not going to spend that on the child. Like you guys have said, you have to hope that that's the case. And you got to get out of that mindset. me as a woman looking for purse money. You just got to get out of that mindset. Yeah. For some help for her bills. Uh, go to krbe.com if you would like to reach out to us. If somebody has messed with you and you got them back, but they don't know it yet. Uh, a variety of different relationships, you know, roommate relationships, r- romantic relationships, sibling relationships. A lot of people are getting back at each other in different ways. Some trying to teach them a lesson. Some just trying to cut the cord and burn that bridge down. Burn that bridge down. <laughs> right down. Okay, coming up next, um, we have a listener line call that came through, and it's 
quite the opposite from what we've heard in the past. There are a lot of people who, of course, in today's economy, you you got to make it by having double income homes. Everybody's mm-hmm. working in the home. Uh, there's a man who wants to stop his wife from working. You'll hear him explain the situation, then we'll get your calls on it next on the Rule and Ryan Show. One hundred four point one K R B E. Ladies and gentlemen, time for Rule and Ryan's group therapy. Okay, our listener line number is seven one three two seven eight vent. But right now, we want to open up the phone lines at eight three 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 nine zero K R B E. That's eight three 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 nine zero five seven two three. You can also text us at three seven five three zero because a lot of people like to chime in. Um, Maybe you're not able to call us, but you can text us your answers. Group therapy happens when you come to us with a dilemma and we give it to our audience to tell you what to do with your life. Here is what we received on the listener line. Morning, we're Larry Ryan show. Uh, I need your help. I got a little problem. So I have a stay home wife and mother. She takes care of the kids during the day while I'm at work. Recently, we've been talking that she wants to get a job. I bring good enough money. I bring anywhere between forty five hundred to fifty five hundred dollars a week. And the thing is that you know we would have to be paying for daycare, which would be about eighteen hundred dollars. But she wants to make her own money, which I do give her money weekly for her personal needs and whatever. How should I go about that? The thing okay. I don't like is like I give her money. I don't well, like that part. He gives her money because he's the he's the one that makes the money. But he's doling so it out. Let's let's do the math here. If he makes forty five hundred, fifty five hundred a it's week. Quarter million a uh, quarter million dollars a year. On the low end, it's two hundred thirty four thousand. Yeah. On the high end, it's two hundred eighty six thousand a yeah. year, which is a very good. That's um, fantastic. There are a lot yeah. of people listening. Like, oh my god, hell yeah, sign me up. I'll be a stay at home parent <laughs> if my mate makes that right. Um, so he feels he, one thing that he didn't tell us, and I wish he did, is how many kids does he have and what are their ages? Because yeah. he said daycare would be in involved if his wife went back to work. 833-390-KRBE. How would you feel if you were this man who, you know, I, I don't think it, sorry, I just hit my bell. Um, I don't think this sounds like a caveman issue. Like you would like, oh, that's a caveman, doesn't want his wife to work. But I feel like for him, he doesn't, I don't think he understands that I don't maybe think she money needs to is work an for issue, herself. Though. She wants to feel in, like, you know, empowered or mm-hmm. she wants to feel like she couldn't contribute or she wants to feel like uh, independent, but it's going to cost and he feels like it's an unnecessary cost. But I mean, look, cost. a lot of women will put their career on hold. And to stay home. To stay and, at yeah. home. You and know, where mom. they were making great money and they were very successful in their field. And they had to sacrifice to stay home and raise the children. Why shouldn't she be able to go and get a job? It's not about the money. It's about you know, being able to use your own skill set and to feel good and accomplished about something. So 37530 is our text number. A lot of people are saying, no, stay home. Another person said, let her work. Another person said, um, I just want to know what he does for a living. Oh, uh, well. He's, <laughs> oh, not, right. he's, not uh, he's bad, getting 4500 sure. a week. Um, this person says, letting her know that he earns enough money so she doesn't have to work if she doesn't want to is... Oh, my God. You guys text so fast. I just lost the dang thing while I was in the middle of reading it. Oh, what I want to is love. Telling her he doesn't want her to work is controlling. And yeah. often that leads to bigger problems. So letting her know that he earns enough so she doesn't have to work is love. Telling her she can't work is controlling. So it really it is, does, about, yeah. it it is about how he presents this to her. I, I would say as we're getting calls lined up at 833-390-KRBE, have a conversation with your wife about what is it that she, like, why does she want to go back to the workforce? Are your kids getting to the age now where she feels like she's not really doing it? Not, moms are always doing something, but you know right. what I mean? Like, there's an age your kids will hit where you could start to find space for work because, the, you know, those zero to maybe seven or eight Mm -hmm. it's all in all the time Mm -hmm. and then something magically happens there's like a crossover when like your your kid gets to like maybe fourth grade or something i don't really know what the magic number is for some moms but it's definitely not the toddler years that you're looking for a job unless you need it no probably not he needs to listen to his wife though i mean he needs to hear her she well, needs what is she this. saying is the question. Right. What is she saying, Ryan? Like, we don't know well, what she's saying. She wants a job. She, she wants, wants a job. To Being a stay-at-home her... mom, uh-huh. it, it can be one of the hardest jobs as well. Yes, because, because there's it never is. a weekend. There's never a weekend. Five it's o'clock never comes. Seven. So yeah. he's working and providing for her, but at the same time, when he comes home, does he allow her to 
technically take her mom hat off and then he's cooking dinner, he's cleaning the house. No, she's still doing that 24-7. Yep. Yeah. At least if she was able to go and work, say she works a 9-to-5, say she works a part-time job, this at least gets her out of kind of the rut of always being at home. Yes, you love your kids unconditionally, but it being with somebody 24-7... That I mean, I think anybody would You're go spot a on. crazy. You're yeah, spot people on. are texting. So it's a right. break from being a mom. Okay, yes, so this person said we have three way. younger kids. Is this the texter? The texter says we have three younger kids. Are you the one that left the message on the listener line? I don't know because I asked the question. He didn't tell us how old his kids are. Right. And because for those who just tuning in, the man says he makes about forty five hundred to fifty five hundred dollars a week, and his wife, who is a stay at home wife and mom, wants to get a job. If she gets a job, that would mean they have to put their kids in daycare so that she can have this job. Maybe he's and he doesn't want her to do that. I think he's using the money as an excuse and not hearing her that she needs. She needs this. I mean, well, she needs to get to out say of this. Why should I, I she don't know be chained to the that. house? Right. I, 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 I kind of know. want her perspective, right. too. Like, I, what is it that you want? Is there a job that came across your your phone that you're like, oh, my God, I would absolutely love this job? Mm-hmm. Is it just that you're stuck and you want something different? And, you know, what is the reason? It's, Are you stressed about money? It sounds like this is heading home, Sam. Do you want to elaborate on the situation? What? Stop what needling, Kevin. I, psh, Kev. My, <laughs> She's ready to sit home. My job and daycare are the same pay, okay? Oh my gosh. So, yeah, you we just, can deep dive that if you want. Just send your paycheck to the daycare. I am at just this point. Give it could to I be, them. Would I be a stay at home mom? Yes, but I would have to put my job on hold. So. Let's go to Jordan on the line. Leave. I don't do that. At 833 390 KRVE. Hi, Jordan. Good morning. Hi, good Hi, morning. Good morning. So what's your advice for the man that um, is working, making lots of money, and saying his wife wants to go to work, but that would cost daycare money, put the kids in daycare so she can have a job? What's your perspective? If the money she's bringing in is bringing in enough to make anything over daycare, then it's worth it because it'll give her her sanity mm-hmm. and you're not losing money. As long as you're not losing money, what's the problem? Okay, that's yeah, a good point. Nice. The job that you have... Um, Okay. Your husband stays at home, My husband said? stays at home. Okay. Yes, and I work full-time. He just graduated and got his degree, and he can't find a job that'll pay more than child care. And that's only like $25 an hour is all he needs. Yeah. So as soon as he finds that, he's going back to work, even if it's only making us $5 an hour more. Yeah, because it is about feeling like you're doing something, you know? And I don't know at yeah. the times that when you had the kids, Jordan... As a working mama, you know, obviously you have the downtime a- away. And mm-hmm. for in my, in my, Hello? oh yeah, can you hear us, Jordan? Oh, We're there. You. Yeah. I don't know. I think, did we lose her? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. You got it? Okay. Um, obviously <laughs> you had the children, but you are working. So in the time that you had maternity leave, which is definitely not a vacation because it's no. exhausting and crazy. Oh did you kind of feel like, man, I can't wait to get back to the normal routine of my job? Absolutely. Because that's the kind of person I am, I cannot not work. Mm-hmm. And also to, yeah. to Sam's point, I, you have a weekend, you have five o'clock, you have end of day. When you are at home all day with the kids, there is no difference in the timeline. There isn't. There's just not. Maybe when they go to bed is your time to kind of breathe a little bit. Right. But then they wake but, up like two hours later and yeah. they come, they're like, oh, I need you in my room. And I don't mean that in a mean way because mm-hmm. some people are like, then don't have kids. We're not saying that w- people don't want to be parents. It's just the balance of trying to figure out, you know, do you stay at home full time and take care of the children or are you able to have both can you right. work and still take care of the kids let's go to beverly on the line at 833-390-KRBE uh, hi beverly good morning hi good morning y'all hey, hey, beverly. Great. i'm gonna reset beverly for those just tuning in a man called our listener line he makes 4500 to 5500 a week and his wife nice. says that she wants to go back to work, but he said for her to go back to work, they have to spend money on daycare. And, you know, she gets money from what he brings in, and he doesn't know what he to, to do He gives her an allowance. Uh, so what, what is your comment on that? Well, I am a mom of four. Mm-hmm. Um, my youngest is 20, so they're one more out of the house. But going to work during the day, it kind of let me reset. It was my sanity. It, it gave me time to be myself, to um, feel independent and not just, you know, mom and wife and cooking and cleaning and all of that. It was just a nice way to, you know, kind of like reset my clock. And sometimes when it was like really stressful, it was just a way to get away, <laughs> Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and you just felt better about yourself to, to be able to 
just kind of have your own identity. I think you hit on that a little bit, Ryan. Yeah. You know, your own skill set. You know, what what can I offer? And it's great that he he wants her to stay home um, because he can afford it. But I think it's more about what she needs for her own mental Yes. Yeah, and, and you know what, Beverly, somebody had texted that maybe she could get a job where it takes her out of the house two or three days a week, not five days a week. Yes. So can, she can have the best of both worlds. I change the scenery a little bit. Yeah. Beverly, thanks for uh, calling in. Charles is up next at 833-390-KRBE. Hi, Charles. Hey, good morning. How are Hi. you? Good morning, Charles. Good. What is your advice to the dad who doesn't want his wife to work because he makes plenty of money and he doesn't want to put their kids in daycare for her well, to get a job? Well, different take than everybody else, but... My, my thing is, is being a, a full-time parent is a temporary job. You only have a few years before your kids start school and they're giving you a break during the day. Um, and my question is, do you want to be the person that's influencing your children and being the biggest impact on them or somebody else that's at a daycare center or school to do that job for you? So my, my only advice is that um, it's not an instant gratification job being a full-time parent, but in the long term, it will pay dividends. Okay. okay. So you're wow. saying. You've got a so, point. You're, you're, so your perspective then is, or your opinion is, she should stay home and just be the one that's with the kids versus putting them in in daycare where somebody else is. But why? Why you know, is it that influencing that the, You know, we've got to get out of this 1950s mindset that the woman is the one that has to sacrifice and stay home. But that's not the point, though. That we, we can't. Why, we can't do can't that he? in this situation because he's, he's the, one the one that's one making, making money. the money. We, we can't just change know. their Maybe scenario. Maybe she's capable of making that kind of money too. Okay, yeah, well, she, we just talked to somebody who said they have a graduate hey, that can't bank. get a job for 25 yeah. bucks an hour. You think that she's going to leave her house right now and get his 5500 a week? I don't think that's realistic uh, in this situation. We don't know enough, though. We don't know what her, her skill set is or her background. Okay, listen, honey, if the mom is going to tell me that she's going to put those kids in daycare to make 6000 a week, yeah. I think this dad's going to be like, hell yes, oh, yeah. let's go. go. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to know where that job is. Charles, thanks so much for calling. Um, are you saying four or five? Four. four. Okay, right, hold on. Let me four. see. Um, this is. Uh, what, hi, what is your name? I don't know what your name is. Unknown. Oh, Unknown. oh you're the listener line caller. <laughs> okay, you're the man who left us <laughs> the right. voicemail. Good. Thank you so much for calling us. I'm glad you got through. Because we have questions about how old your kids are. Because you're talking about you don't want your kids to go in daycare. How old are your kids and how many do you okay. have? Okay, one's about to be uh, three. Okay. Okay. Uh, on Halloween, one's five and mm. one's ten. Okay. okay. Three, five, and, and ten. And then I got an eight. I got a, a 17 year old that's about to be 18. So uh, it's. Yeah. Full house. It is full house. Yeah. Now, what kind of. Did your wife say she wants to go back to work five days a week full time and just have have the three year old and the five year old? Because um, five year olds, you're about to start kindergarten. Um, what, 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 how did she present this to you? Uh, the five year old is in kindergarten already. Okay. So, um, um, you know, it, and it's not an allowance. I'm sorry, but. Okay. Uh, it, it's more like a, you know, because he has access, full access to the account. Yeah, so joint, 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 joint yeah. access. Whatever. Okay. But, you know, to get her beauty supplies, whatever, makeup, that's, you know, I just give her money for that as well. Oh, a, a lady but, needs um, her beauty supplies. Hey, man. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me <laughs> ask you, what, what is your wife's then? background skill set? Was she a professional before having children and she'd like to get back into that? Uh, I wanted to, you know, make her a professional. But then we started having kids, and we put off, put that off. So, so she has, she didn't know, have a job before she became a mama. Y'all got married and boom. Uh, yeah, she did. But you know, I was making enough money. I told her to quit. So okay. I asked her to quit, and then relocated to Dallas. So mm -hmm. you know, and then we moved back to Houston area, and then ever since we've been there ever since. Okay. Did she tell you that she needs a break from being at home, or what, how did she tell yeah, you? Like, what kind of job up? is she looking for? What, how did she bring up the conversation to you? Um, she hasn't said a particular type of job that she's looking for, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I do try to tend to, you know, give her little mini vacations. Uh, we go on trips a lot. We go out a lot. Okay. So, you know, I do pay for babysitters here and there. You know, like recently, you know, we just went to uh, Canyon Lake for her birthday. We're in a cabin out there. You know, family came over and everything like that, so. Again, she's you know, still we, taking we care do, of kids. Do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. on vacation. It's do you trip. have the type of job that requires you uh, working full time? You, like, you don't have enough time in your day or your life to take care of the kids at all, do you? Yes, I do. You do? Yes. 
I mean, I think that when he comes home, he can take care of the kids just because he worked all day. Doesn't then mean perhaps he yeah. one of our earlier callers suggested maybe a couple of days a week. You know, she needs a break. Let her. Let her. And, and, and I heard that, and mm-hmm. that was that was a good idea. And, and you know, this is the, the problem that I was having because I didn't know how to go about that. Yeah. So I've mm-hmm. been scratching my mind for a couple of months already. So I'm like, mm, you know, and I, I know she does need a break. I know she does want to get out, uh-huh. but. You know, without the kids. Okay. Well, I think, can we say that, that that's the answer then that you can go with to present to her? Say, how about you find something just a couple days a week to get you out of the house, but also not spend, because the, the, the first caller, Jordan, made a point to say, if what she is going to bring in is going to cover daycare, then let her do whatever she wants. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because, yeah. but you and are also making good money. that's the thing, because, yes, and that's the thing. Like, what I, the way I see it, I will have to be coming out of pocket because, you know, straight off the back, nobody's going to make no more than $20 an hour. Okay. You know, and in this, era, right. you know. Yeah. I mean, we just had that lady calls and her husband just graduated. <laughs> he can't find a job yet for the money he wants. Yeah, but, yeah. but at least allow her to try. Sure. Worst comes to worst. Oh, she, yes, you know what yes. I mean? She does it for a couple months, realizes maybe she doesn't like the job, or maybe you guys realize that it's not financially okay. At least you allowed her to try. Because the thing is, if yeah. you don't, I think she's going to hold that against you totally and resent, be yeah. like, you never allowed me to do this. Yeah, you're controlling me. Yeah. But it I'm, sounds I'm like glad. Yeah, and that's John what I don't, that I want to be. Yeah. 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 You know. Allow her to try it. I'm glad that you, you cared enough. Uh, thank you for the call, by the way. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you care enough and that you love her enough. And I'm glad you, you called in to try. answer the questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Doe. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, let us know I'm, how this I'm turns out. Working, I'm, I'm currently working right now, so I, I was listening and I was like, oh, man, they, you know, they're asking questions that I got to try to hurry up and fix it. So, <laughs> no. That's He's awesome. in the restroom. Oh, I love it. Away. I love it. Okay, well, yeah. let's get back to work. Oh, Good just luck. real quick. What's the field of work you're in? Don't tell us where you work, but what type of work do you do? People are very curious. I'm an owner operator. I own my own business for uh, truck. Trucks. Okay. Trucks. Good for awesome. you. Well, thank you so much for you, uh, coming to us for the advice. And let us know what happens and let us know what kind of job she finds if you can find one that makes it work. All right, thank you. All right, thank you so right, much. Have a care. great day. And that's how group right, therapy, bye-bye. nice, wrapped up wow, with the bow, full that circle. Unfolded. That was cool. That we call. love it when you leave us the group therapy, and then you call in to answer the questions we don't have the answers to. <laughs> um, so for anybody struggling with that, I think it's a good, happy compromise. A couple days a week, let's see what happens. Coming up next, Disney on Ice tickets. Speaking of family and how you're going to entertain your, entertain your kids, and Gondo and Frozen are coming. We'll give you tickets next on The Rule and Ryan Show. Gentlemen, please welcome Ryan Celebrity Scoop 104.1 KRBE. It is brought to you by Takaria Sarandas. And uh, you know, it's Nutcracker Market season in November, which means it's Disney on Ice season for years. While you go shopping over here at Christmas Crazy, over there is Disney on Ice. It's always the same time every single year. Uh, it comes a couple times a year, but this time it is uh, focusing on Frozen and Encanto. It is coming to NRG Stadium November 14th through the 7th. 17th, and we have a four pack of tickets to see Disney on Ice, Frozen, and Encanto. If you are caller 10 at 833 390 KRBE, and I have not, you know, you kind of get into those, um, those, uh, what's the word, uh, routines mm-hmm. where your kids watching the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. They want to watch like a hundred times in a row. They just I, can't I, get mean, of it. I would, I would hide that, delete it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not again. For a while, it was, you know, of course, Frozen when the kids were small, and I still remember <laughs> being on the air and not knowing what. But we were doing a scoop story about the top Disney princesses, and like number six was Anna, mm-hmm. and I was like, I don't even know who that is. Like, who's Anna? And these, all these moms were texting, like, Oh my God, Rula, your girls have to see Frozen. This is a perfect age for them because my girls were like two and three, movie. and I didn't get it. I go, I don't know who Princess Anna is. And now, of course, you know we're crazy Frozen. And then Encanto has gotten back in our wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. The the songs from Encanto make me so happy. I don't speak Spanish, but I can sing it. And I just love this movie so much. And it and, and, and I have yet to watch the entire thing sitting down on the couch from the have, first uh, frame to the last frame. Subtitles? I've never seen it. They, they don't, don't need subtitles. It. It's, it's, it's all in English. It's, English. it's all in English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have like, um, there's a little, little bit of Spanglish, but it, uh-huh. it's really just English. It's okay. a cute little story, and everybody has it's this theory on why Mirabel doesn't get her powers. Yes. And Encanto is basically this enchanted candle. It's, it's really cute. Like, I feel like you could watch town. it at any age. Oh, my God. It's Real so quick, cute. Rula, because yeah. you're talking about all these Disney stuff. Yeah. Um, I took Santiago to Discovery Green. There's uh-huh. the Putt-Putt Pixar. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, if you look at my Instagram, Slam Given, it's this little, it was like 18 holes, and 
them. They're like part three, part two, and it's all Disney. So Encanto oh, was cute. there. The movie Up was like, you know what I mean? Like that's how the golf course was. There? Yeah, they have discounts. So if you do like a family four Hold pack, on. okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that Putt Putt had par. Like uh, yes, par. I don't know. Par. Yes, I don't know really? the golf terms. So par means a like, par means how many it should take to get to the hole. Yeah. Okay. So, so a lot like, of, yeah, so they'll be like a par three, meaning you should only have to three hit the shots. ball three, three shots. shots. Yes, mm-hmm. but some of them are really hard. It took me like five, but okay. anything from um, <laughs> I know, five. like Encanto, um, Toy windmill, Story. The windmill is hard. The windmill was really hard. <laughs> no, it was. Stop it. That dinosaur mouth is it's rough. The um, dinosaur. It was got a dinosaur. Five. You got to time it out. It's Toy Story, out. but that's um, oh, that's cute. Is it running for a long time? I don't think it's running for a long time. They kind of just do the little pop ups. Okay, it's right now during Discovery Green. So something for your weekend. With your good. kids, because then they'll know, they'll know the movies. Is it Monday through Friday as well? Yeah. Because yes. that's the best yeah. time to go when you're like, okay, what are we doing today? Yes. Let's see so what we're cool. doing today. Check it out. Green. It was a lot today? of fun. And Santiago have- Beater. He just walked the ball to the hole. I brought his own little like golf club, and he was just like trying to like whack people with it. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> he's a little too young, but it was a lot of fun. As long as they're having fun. <laughs> what was that? He says, stop it. Shut up. Um, Whoopsies. Okay, if you have been um, of somebody who loves Bachelor Nation and you've watched all the seasons from in all the way Golden Bachelor and Bachelorette, you know, Martha Stewart, who has tons of money and became famous and rich after the age of 50, is now 83 years old. And she was asked by Andy Kahn, would you ever, on Watch What, Watch what Happens Live, would you ever consider being the Golden Bachelorette? And she said, not even for a million dollars an episode because of wow. this reason. Not because she thinks this show is cheesy, not because she wouldn't want that kind of exposure, but because the guys are not good looking enough for her. What? I did not watch the Golden. What? Did you watch the Golden Bachelor, right, Sam? I only saw previews. I didn't. I didn't yeah, go I into did this. That. Did you watch yeah. the Golden Bachelor? I did. Yeah, you were more invested in that. Yeah, because it was like the first. I just saw a, a, like some of the the hi- not the highlight reels, but you know, like they do like those interview reels with the guys, like the yes. bachelors, and they're like, I mean, these are like brothers, these are like our brothers, and it was it was kind of sweet because you know when you're in your sixties and seventies, you know we already say how hard it is to just m- make friends as adults in your thirties. So imagine like all these guys were saying they all met each other at this house for the Golden Bachelorette, and they like have formed these bonds, and they're like, you know, it's nice to have some guy friends yeah. in your 70s, I mm-hmm. guess, when your friends have maybe moved along or passed on passed. or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, um, um, Martha Stewart, not at any time soon is she going to be the Golden Bachelorette. Plus, she has lots of money. But also, inspirational story. She did not get rich until after she was 50. Same thing with Steve Harvey. Wow, Steve Harvey had that. made money, but not the money he's got now mm-hmm. until after he was 50. So if anybody's struggling right now in their 30s, like, well, I got 20 good years to just do nothing until I hit it rich. Hey, yo. Time for KRBE's Rula and Ryan show to tell you what's going down, 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 down. in H-Town. I saw this story on Click2Houston.com. So we've often talked about why don't school buses have seat belts? Well, back in 2017, our state, Texas, became one of only a handful of states in the country to pass some kind of school bus seatbelt law. So we're asking ourselves, why don't the buses all have seatbelts yeah, now? They don't all have them. Well, some here's the them. deal. That's because the legislation requires three-point seatbelts on all buses that are modeled after the year 2018. So the law does not require the school districts to retrofit the older buses with seatbelts. That allows school districts, uh, it allows them to opt out of the program because of budgetary reasons. When I saw that my bus was the old bus in uh, first and second grade, I would sneak away and walk home because the bus would notoriously break down at the same place because oh, it could really? never get up the hill. Aww. It was a stick shift bus, like oh an old goodness. ass stick shift bus. Uh-huh. And I was, and I, I would have to wait for like two hours for another bus to come get us. So I was like, screw that. I'm going to walk home. And then, you know, everyone's wondering why I'm not getting home in the right time. I was like, no, don't worry. I just walked home through various neighborhoods <laughs> and streets and whatnot. Well, how long did you even so, make yeah. it in the winter, Kevin, when you were young? There's no way the bus could make it up the regular hill. What happened in the ice and the, the snow? Well, you know, it wasn't a traction issue. It was an engine issue. It would, oh. it, we called it the breakdown bus. Oh the breakdown God. bus. And, and I, I was like, nope, not today, breakdown bus. So basically, Holy if smoke. you don't have a no seatbelt seat on your bus this morning, that means that your bus is older than 2018. Uh. 
You're in an older bus. That's yeah, it. Old bus. I mean, they run just fine. A couple years ago, not really. a neighborhood bus in my neighborhood legit caught fire, and all the kids had to race out of the oh bus. My oh my god, god that's, that's so and scary. I thought that would have made more news, but it really didn't. Well, that's that's scary. scary. That back door, and you. I remember the having to do bus at the top bus yeah. drills at, at the beginning of the year. We'd have uh-huh. to do bus drills, and we'd jump into like coach the coach's arms. Yeah, you know, because you can't jump off the oh, back right. of the bus so too high. high. You yeah. have to so jump into someone's arms. Yeah, and the breakdown bus was that case. I asked them all. Moms in that neighborhood. Oh my God, what happened with this bus? And she goes, Oh my God, this bus all constantly breaks down. It was just a matter of matter of time. Yes. And then here it comes. Yikes. It was at the stop sign, and smoke started coming out of the hood. Oh and the bus driver was like, no. Let's get these kids out just to be safe instead of sitting there. And the whole thing just goes. Oh. And it was. I can't believe it didn't make more news, but it was so crazy. The pictures I saw of this broke down bus on fire. So thank God the bus driver was smart scary. enough to get the kids off yeah, the bus. Yeah, kids, wow. you know you know which bus is the breakdown bus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, coming up next, try it Tuesday. And what are we trying? Oh, it's sweet and spicy Tuesday. We've got candy. Mm-hmm. We've got drinks. We've got all things that are sweet and spicy. But in what capacity? And who's gonna? Be the one that doesn't try it and gets a ding on them for the mystery. Oh, I'm box. trying this. <laughs> Let's find oh, out next right. on the Rolling Ranch Show.